Hello everyone, this is Mike. Welcome to my channel, Mike the Tech Savvy. I have a very special video for today, a video which has been very requested and a video which can finally be released. The tutorial, the full guide on how to root the Samsung Galaxy S21 and by this I mean the whole family, so S21, S21 Plus and S21 Ultra. This is a brand new, fully stock Samsung Galaxy S21. I will take you through all the steps and I will show you exactly what to do in order to gain root access. So let's get on with it. I will start off by giving you a couple words of warning. Take note that this procedure will definitely void the warranty. It will trigger NOx and this trigger can never be brought back to zero and it will fully wipe the device a couple of times. If any of you wonder if this can be done without wiping the device, the answer is definitely not. At least two wipes are required in order to perform the root procedure. It should work on all Exynos based S21 devices. The model number of my device is SMG991B. I will write it here. And of course it's a dual SIM variant. There are some requirements to this procedure. All of them have to be fulfilled. You will need a Windows 10 PC or laptop, 7-zip or any other unzipping software of your choice. You need to have the Samsung drivers installed correctly. You will need one of these two apps or anything else to download a stock Samsung firmware. Odin and last but not least, the most important thing, you will need a Magis cap. And the latest version, 22, it's really something redesigned and it makes everything much easier. There are only four main steps, quite straightforward I might add. Let's start everything and I guess we'll go forward with the first one. So let's unlock the bootloader. In order to unlock the bootloader, you will need to go into developer options, settings, and of course developer options aren't here, you will have to activate them first. Go into about phone, software information and now click the build number five times. Developer mode has been turned on, back, back and now the last setting here is developer options. You need to tick OEM unlocking and now you will need to reboot into download mode and for this you'll need to power off the device. Things have complicated a bit, so for the S21, in order to boot up into download mode, you will need to have a USB Type-C cable available. Of course, mine is connected to my laptop here. The device turned off and you will need to plug in the USB Type-C cable into the phone whilst you press the volume down and the volume up keys simultaneously. Press the volume up and volume down and insert the USB Type-C cable and now we finally have the download mode. You can see here very interestingly that we have English, Korean and Chinese writing. For the earlier models we only had English text and right now we need to long press volume up in order to go into device unlock mode. This is what we want. Be aware of the fact that this will fully wipe the device so make sure you have a backup in order not to lose any important data. So long press volume up you can see the risks and it will definitely warn you about the fact that it will also delete all personal data. You'll get this message where you can definitely see what you've done. Yeah, you've unlocked the bootloader. Now it will fully wipe and it will launch the operating system. The device is quite hot right now, even though only a few minutes have passed. This whole factory data reset makes it quite toasty. Nothing too unusual, given that this is a Galaxy flagship. At this point, you will need to go through the setup wizard and please also connect to a wireless network. You may think that you've unlocked the bootloader, but with the introduction of Vault Keeper, you'll need to perform some extra steps. Just go through the setup wizard. Now I've connected to a Wi-Fi network. It's not necessary to connect a Gmail account, actually I wouldn't recommend it at this point because you will wipe the device anyway once again. Don't copy, skip, skip. Setup wizard is definitely longer than it was in the past, so yeah, a lot of choices to be made. Luckily we're not interested in any of them at this point. Now we'll need to activate developer options once again, about phone, 
software information, build number, tap it until developer mode turns on, double tap back, developer options, and now you will have to see this, OEM unlocking, grayed out and ticked. This is the message that gives you a green light to move forward with the next steps in the process. Now and only now the bootloader accepts unofficial images in download mode. I will also tick USB debugging just in case and I guess we're good. Now let's move on to the next steps. As you can see right here, the second step would be to download the stock firmware, extract and patch the AP file. This is a more complex step and I have here three subchapters. So the first one would be to download the stock firmware. And for this, I'm using one of these two softwares. I'm using Freesia right now and it works perfectly. I'll uh, show you right now how it uh, works. I won't record directly on the laptop. I will film the laptop screen because I want to show you in real time what happens on the phone as well. So let's move on for a little while to the, to the laptop right now. Feel free to use whatever method you want for downloading a stock Samsung firmware. Myself, I have used Freesia, which has worked just as fine as Samfirm has worked in the past. But unfortunately, I believe it's deprecated and it doesn't work anymore. I have wrote here the model number. You can find it on the box. You can find it very easily in the settings as well. Go into settings, about phone, model number, SMG991B in my case. Now, in order to find the CSC, this is a bit trickier. I would suggest you to sideload the phone info app for this purpose. Open it, skip this step. Once again, you have the phone model. And in the second page, you have the active CSC. I wrote it here. I pressed auto and then check update. Successfully fetched latest firmware. Make sure this firmware here matches the one you have on your device. And this is quite easy as well. Go into settings, about phone, software information, and there you go. This is exactly what we have here. Now you can go on and download this. It will arrive in the form of a zip file like this, which you'll need to extract. I have used 7-zip for this purpose. Extract 2. These are all the files that are usually required to flash a new ROM in Odin. As mentioned here, we will now need to patch the AP file. We already have it here extracted. And in order to patch it, we will need to copy it onto the device. In my case, I have copied it in the download folder. It's already here. You will also need the Magisk APK. You will need to install it on the device for this step. After you've installed the Magisk app, open it, tap install here. Select and patch a file and now select your AP file that you just copied beforehand and let's go. And it's done. You can definitely see where you can find the output file and the name of it. And now you're ready to move to the next step. Now that the AP file has been patched, we will need to copy it back onto the PC in order to flash everything via Odin. A word of warning, in order to copy this from the phone to the PC, I would recommend you to use ADB. So use ADB, pull, SD card, download in my case, and then this name of the tar file. A simpler method would be to copy it straight away via MTP, but be aware of a small risk that MTP may corrupt the file, it can do this with large files. I have copied the tar file onto the PC and now we're ready to proceed to the third and kind of final step, honestly, which requires us to flash everything via Odin. I am using Odin 3.14.1. Please be careful where you source your Odin software. I haven't mentioned this, but of course, Everything from this list will be listed in the video description. So everything you need, including 7-Zip, Drivers, Frija, Odin, and the Magisk app, I would recommend you to use those from the description. Of course, be very careful when downloading the ROM for your device. Make sure you download the correct one. Okay, let's move on. Let's flash everything via Odin. 
we go back to the PC. We need to launch Odin, which is right here. Run it as administrator. Again, a word of warning here. If you have to delete your Google account or Samsung account, I haven't actually connected either of them. So I guess I'm good. And now you have to select everything from here. Go to the folder where you have the patched tar file and everything else. Now that we've selected bootloader, select BL, open, wait for it to be analyzed. In the AP slot, we won't be putting the original AP file, but the magisk patched tar file in the CP slot, CP file, and in CSC, make sure you use the CSC file and not the home CSC, because we definitely need another full wipe for this Odin flash. I will now give you another look at the files that I have selected here. There you go, CSC, CP, Magisk, Patched, Star File, and the bootloader. Disable Auto Reboot, and you're almost ready. In order to use Odin, of course, you will need to place the device into download mode once again. Turn it off. Remove the USB-C cable. Press volume up and down at the same time. Insert the USB-C cable, and there you go, download mode. Press volume up once to go into the actual download mode, and now we're good to go. Double check everything from this list, and click start. It has already begun. This procedure will take about 10 minutes, or maybe even more, so be patient. We have pass on the device, you will not see much, but Odin is really important at this point. If you have a green light and the pass, that means everything has completed successfully. You can simply reboot the device at this point with the combination that you can see here, volume down and side key for more than seven seconds. Again, the bootloader error message. We don't need to worry about this one. Detected by the windows, which is always a good sign. The device was fully wiped. Just move forward with it. Connect to the internet once again. This is really important. You can skip these steps for now or you can configure the device straight away. It's your choice. This was the last wipe that we had to do. I will be skipping everything just to show you the exact thing to do in order to gain the root access because you still have to do something And now you can see that we have Magisk here, but it doesn't look normal, so just tap it. It will ask you to upgrade. Click OK. Settings. Allow. Install. Now open it. You will get this pop-up, and then tap OK. Be aware of the fact that it will reboot after it's done. The device has vibrated, this means that it has turned off and rebooted successfully. And theoretically now we should have a fully wiped Samsung Galaxy S21 with root access and of course with the latest stock firmware. As you can see this method doesn't take into account any custom recovery because it's no longer an option. Let's open it up, the moment of truth. And yep, we do have everything. Magisk 22 installed. The latest step, let's check safety net. Okay, it fails. It's not really a big thing. This can be corrected. You can install some Magisk modules to get rid of the attestation failed message here. And then you will also be able to use banking applications, that's for sure. You have a pretty big repository and of course you can sideload other modules if you want. I've already restarted the device a few times normally just with the typical restart button. Afterwards the root access works just as expected. Of course the device is pretty toasty. You can definitely cook some eggs on it right now. The whole process gets it quite excited as far as I can see. Everything works, now you're free to customize the device however you see fit. You can see that everything is working from a 
super user perspective, you can definitely run wild and install lots of modules. Well, we've now reached this step, the fourth one, which says reboot and enjoy. We've reached the final part, the enjoy part. Everything should work just as I mentioned here. As I said previously, all the apps that I mentioned in this video and that are required to perform the root operation will be listed in the video description below. I have tried to be as clear and concise about all the steps. Make sure you don't skip anything. And RAM disk should be yes for you as well. And this means that you can safely restart the device normally without the fear of losing the root access. If by any chance your RAM disk is no here, well, this actually means that you will have to reboot with the recovery combo every time, including after flashing with Odin. Be very careful when performing this. Normally, if you did anything wrong, you should retrace your steps and start from scratch. So if you did something wrong here, you should flash the whole stock firmware via Odin and then start once again. But you shouldn't have any issues if you would follow everything I mentioned in this video step by step. Two more things which will definitely be useful in the future. The first one is that if you want to update to a newer firmware version, you should always pre-patch the AP file and flash it via Odin just like you did before. But this time you should use the home CSC and not the CSC file. This would preserve the data when doing a firmware update with Odin. And the second is that if you'd like to revert to a fully stock non-rooted ROM, you'll need to simply flash everything from there, including the original AP file and the CSC in order to make a full wipe. It is mandatory if you want to revert to a stock ROM after having a rooted one to go through the CSC file, which will wipe the device once again. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this tutorial was clear enough. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you'd like to see more similar videos in the future, also press the subscribe button, which will be displayed right here in the bottom left part. In the video description below, you'll also find the links to my social media and to my Patreon accounts. This was Mito Tech Savvy. Until next time, stay safe, guys. Bye.